Joining me now is one of the members of Congress who's been questioning witnesses all week, Democratic Congressman Denny Heck of Washington. Um, how would you sum up what you learned in this week of testimony? There was a lot of it. Well, I'd, I'd sum it all up in two ways. First of all, I think in some regards, American can sleep better tonight because they were treated to witness after witness after witness from the diplomatic corps and from federal service that put their love of country before all else. People of integrity and character and courage, dare I say, given all that went on. And secondly, Chris, he did it. That's it. He did it. The fact of the matter is the evidence is overwhelming. And if this were a criminal justice proceeding, and it's kind of roughly analogous to that, the jury would have brought back a unanimous verdict and it wouldn't have taken them 10 minutes to deliberate. He did it. And the only question left is, what is Congress going to do about it now? Um, to that point, uh, the, the summation I thought by the chair today, uh, 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 Mr. Schiff, was was really quite uh, remarkable. I want to just play a little sound because uh, what he says in the end has a kind of direness to the warning. And I want to get your reaction to it. Take a listen. But I will tell you why I could resist no more. And it came down to this. It came down to actually it came down to timing. It came down to the fact that the day after Bob Mueller testified, the day after Bob Mueller testified that Donald Trump invited Russian interference, the day after that, Donald Trump is back on the phone asking another nation to involve itself in another U.S. election. That says to me, this president believes he is above the law, beyond accountability. And in my view, there is nothing more dangerous than an unethical president who believes they are above the law. And I would just say to people watching here at home and around the world, in the words of my great colleague, we are better than that. Adjourned. Congressman, how, how dire do you think the stakes are in terms of the message that is sent both to this president and future presidents if it is essentially deemed fine to do what the president did? If he normalizes this, Chris, absolutely. We have an opportunity here to hold the president accountable. And if we do not, pretty clearly he will have established the base that any future president can get away from this, can get away with the kinds of things that he did, and that there will be no, no way to hold them accountable. I've always thought this was about the rule of law and whether or not the president was above it. He's not. Um, one of your colleagues today, uh, Republican Will Hurd, he's a retiring uh, member of Congress. He was seen, I think, as uh, sensible uh, by Democrats, uh, a moderate. Uh, he's retiring. He has expressed his reservations about the president's conduct. He, he closed today by saying there's not evidence here to impeach. Were you surprised by that? What's your reaction? So I think Will Hurd is an honorable person, and I think he's been an honorable member of Congress. And in fact, Chris, I cannot exaggerate to you how much I would like to have the debate that he set forth. Namely, what happened here was wrongdoing. It simply didn't rise to the level of an impeachment, impeachable offense. Now, I happen to disagree with Will on that score, but the fact is that would be a healthy debate. That's not the argument that all right. of his colleagues are making. They're all saying nothing wrong went on here, nothing whatsoever. I don't even know why we're doing this, when in fact the evidence is, again, overwhelming. The debate that Will would like to have would be a good debate for America. What we're having is not one. Were you, um, Fiona Hill today uh, was a, a fairly uh, striking witness in, in many ways. She kept warning about the um, insidiousness of a variety of, of sort of false narratives uh, about you know, Ukraine meddling in, in the American elections and, and the conspiracy theory, of course, it made its way all the way to the president's lips in the phone call with Zelensky, which is almost too insane to describe, but essentially comes down to the DNC teaming with Ukraine to hack its own servers and leak its own emails in order to frame Russia for it. What did you make of her saying that? And then your Republican colleagues continue to truck in precisely uh, what she had identified. 
Well, they've been oblivious to the facts seemingly from the very beginning, but she's absolutely right in pinpointing what the multiple levels of danger really are here. First of all, if this argument is allowed to be propagated, it weakens Ukraine, right? Because it calls into question our support for a country that would do this to us. Russia delights in that because what makes Russia, what makes Ukraine weaker makes Russia stronger. They would like nothing better than to be able to march into Ukraine and make it a client state. And of course, we've compromised the Ukraine's uh, national security by making this argument, and we compromise our own national security by making the argument. And oh, by the way, in the process, we've undermined the very predicate of American democracy, which again is the rule of law. Right. Uh, Congressman Denny Heck, uh, who was in those hearings all week, thank you so much. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.